another Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast, the return of OJ the Musical to the Waiting for Next Year podcast. But this time we've doubled up. I've got Jeff, Jeff Rosenberg, who was on once before. The star of OJ the Musical, Jordan Kenneth Camp, is also on the line. Do you do you prefer three names? Uh, you can just call me Jordan. Uh, okay. You can call me Jordan guys. Camp. If you can hear me, I just completely lost everything again. Well, that's too bad because we can hear you. Yeah, we can. We are off to a good start, Jeff. <laughs> well, that's um, unfortunate. But uh, so anyway, uh, I, I noticed your IMDb page went by three names, so I didn't know. Yeah, you know, I use my middle name only because um, it's my father's first name. So, uh, you know, it's a little tribute to my dad, but um, yeah, I just go by Jordan Camp normally, but I, I always have to say Camp with a K, you know, like back in the day when you used to get photos developed and go pick your photos up and you say your last name, Camp with a K. It's always Camp with a K my whole life. Well, and plus you didn't want to be confused as a family member of Jesse Camp. Right. Um, yeah, I no. might be the only one listening. I might be the only one around who's old enough to remember Jesse Camp, but no, if I'm back DJ. on and you can hear me, I get that reference. <laughs> we can hear you, but you're back to sounding awful, sir. Oh man, what happened? I just like I bought this microphone on Amazon. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> I used it last time, and I think I sounded good. And it just keeps uh, crapping out. All right. So when I said we doubled up on the cast, I meant that we just changed cast members this time. So we went from the director <laughs> to now we have the yeah. star. So I'm going to talk to Jordan for a little bit, and then uh, maybe we'll retry the microphone. Um, but uh, so it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It's been a while since I talked about the movie. Yeah. But since I last talked to Jeff, it's been on a theater run, a theatrical run. It's it's now available in iTunes. Um, what's yeah. the whole experience been like for you? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I, it is. At this point, we've had our uh, festival run, you know, um, which has been up up to this point, American festivals. Um, I think we have a, an international festival coming up that Jeff probably has more information about. But so that's, you know, about a year ago in August is when we premiered it at Michael Moore's Traverse City Film Festival. And then went on to play, you know, um, a handful, more than a handful, 14, 15 or so festivals and counting. But, um, yeah, on June 17th, which was the 20th anniversary of the Bronco Chase, we had our uh, VOD release. And we also did um, some theatrical screenings through Tug, um, which is kind of like, a, you know, a Kickstarter for... Um, independent film so you have to sell a specific number of tickets and as soon as you reach that limit then you get the theater to have your screening of your movie so we screened in nine different cities across the u.s on that day um and i think the the threshold for a majority of those screenings was about 80 90 tickets so um it's been a lot of fun and we had some nice buzz around it when the movie came out uh you know huffington post uh, did a little blog on us. Washington Post did a review on us. Um, not long after the film came out uh, digitally, we had some fan art made of our characters from the UK. Um, a nice lady made some paper puppets of some of our characters, which you can print out at home. Uh, so that was a little mind blowing, and um, and it was a lot of fun. And it, and at this point, I got to say it's. Uh, you know, people still ask me about it because it was a big part of our Jeff and I's lives and. For me, it's sort of like on to the next one. Well, and I hope you know? uh, I hope Jeff can actually hear us because uh, he sounds. I think he's going to sound good again. Yeah, or maybe he's just gone altogether. Or maybe he's just gone altogether. All right. Well, I'm going to continue with you. Um, so, how many times? Hey, Greg. Also, too, I listened to your uh, album that you put on Spotify, and I really enjoyed it. I wanted to tell you that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um. The, the uh so how many times and that's that's funny actually because uh i i've tried to listen to myself and it's really tough sometimes i kind of cringe my way through it but when you're when you're uh screening a movie and you're supporting a movie you actually have to probably watch yourself a bunch of times how many times have you seen the movie no it, you don't uh, okay in fact 
what I have to do now is drink two beers during the movie and come back for a, a more fun question and answer because I'll be a little bit uh, a little bit more loose uh, after the two beers. I haven't, I, to be honest with you, I really, it's been a long time since I've watched the movie. You know, Jeff and I will introduce the film if we're at the festival and then Jeff usually stays to watch it because if anything happens during the screening, he wants to be there to jump on it and have it fixed if there's sound issues or, or picture issues. But I had to let that go a while ago. And so I'll just walk a couple blocks. Sometimes I'll just sit in the lobby. Um, and I just put the timer on my phone, walk away, wait till it goes off, come back. Yeah. Cause and... for you, it's, it's, it's in the, it's in the can. There are no redos. There's nothing you can do about it. And so, right. yeah, which is frustrating, you know, cause you'll, Look, I'm very proud of the project. Sure. Uh, I'm very proud of what we accomplished. And at the same time, look, the first time I watched it with a crowd was probably the most enjoyable time I've ever watched the film. Um, I was, and and I have a hard time not only watching myself, but I, I usually don't laugh out loud in movie theaters at all. Like if something's funny, I, I'm the kind of person I'll laugh on the inside and it'll amuse me and it'll put a smile on my face, but it was legitimately fun watching it with the crowd and hearing an audience react and laugh to it. And then after that, you watch it and you're like, Oh man, I really don't like this part. And, um, I wish I would have done something different here. And, um, you know, you get to that point and, and then it's not uh, productive at all for you anymore. So you just got to kind of let it go. That being said, I still love sharing it with a group of people in a room. You know, I know that the way the independent film is sort of, trending is that it's consumed uh, on computers and at home now, but watching it in a movie theater with a lot of people is fun. So I enjoy setting that experience up for people. And I do think that, um, which is, uh, you know, it is kind of too bad that Jeff isn't with us right now, just because I think a lot of times when he and I uh, are at a festival together, it gives a different kind of take for the audience to be able to see us and hear us talk about it and do our, you know, our little, uh, shtick about the film. Um, I think that's a, a sort of special way to, to, to watch a movie is to hear what the filmmakers have to say. Yeah. Uh, and we're, actually I'm going to take a quick break here and we're going to try and get Jeff back on. So do we have to, <laughs> uh, you hear that? You hear that robotic? Oh gosh, Jeff, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Mark time. It's seven minutes and forty seconds. I'm gonna go back and cut this out later. Um, hey, hey, Jeff, can you uh, can you text me your phone number? I'm gonna try and dial you in on the phone. <laughs> I actually don't think I'm gonna cut this out now. All right, I I hung up. I hung up on him because that was awful. That's what was happening earlier, and he was like, oh, "Can you hear me now?" And I'm like, "Dude, it sounds like a robot." And he's like, "Well, how about now?" I'm like, "No, it still sounds like a robot." That's hysterical. Hello. That sounds great. Holy cow, we did it! Yeah, now let me get Jordan. He's gonna sound robotic now. Yeah, he's. <laughs> oh, hey, Jordo. Hello. Hi. Is it working? Uh, yeah. Do I sound like a human being again? <laughs> kind of. Uh, cool. I guess that's. Be I guess that's better than completely not before. So. No, this is great. All right, you guys ready? Yes. Uh, I'm good to go. All right, and we are back. We've got everybody connected in, in good working order. I was talking to Jordan, the star of OJ the Musical, uh, and now we've got the director, who was previously on the podcast back, Jeff Rosenberg. Um, we were talking a little bit about what it was like on the festival circuit for Jordan and how long it's been since he's seen the film. So I'll, I'll ask you the same question. How many times have you seen the film now? Do you, have you lost count? Oh, I lost count before we had even showed it at a festival. I'm... It's got to be in the thousands. Oh, because you edited it too, didn't you? Uh, Spencer Hauck edited it and was a co-producer, but I was in his 
I was basically in his guest room with him, putting my feet on his cou- on his pillows all the time and making it. That's like a famous joke with all my friends that I do that. I don't wear shoes very often. Um, but yeah, I was around uh, for the whole process. And, you know, you watch it so many times and we did so many different cuts of it and different versions. I remember we showed it to a friend and we gave them a DVD. And Spencer's uh, pretty anal about how he does everything. And it said like version 58.6 on it. Oh, and wow. I was like, well, they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and so, and then it hits a point, you know, where every time you, you know, do a new output for Blu-ray or DVD or things like that, like you have to do QC on it. So you just, I, I mean, I've just seen the movie too many times at this point. And Jeff, I was talking about too, how at festivals at this point, I'll go get a couple beers during the movie, but you really can't pull yourself away from it on on the off chance that something horrible happens and you have to have a mini freak out about it and fix it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thanks for expanding. <laughs> no, sorry, my I went I, I had a freak out when the podcast went to hell and went to my wife who was in the shower and so she who was seven and a half months pregnant, was just with the door open trying to give me hand signals to ask if the podcast was now working. <laughs> and I was waving at her to go away, and she just kept doing thumbs up, thumbs down, and I didn't hear anything either of you said. This is going really well, guys. Um, no, and I can I can attest to that. We weren't able to podcast until I had both my two kids in bed, which is kind of standard operating procedure for me in the podcasting world. Um, and so the, the 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 pregnant wife routine is uh, is one that I'm also familiar with. So, <laughs> oh, wonderful! Yeah, it's uh it's all exciting stuff. We had the baby shower uh, yesterday. My in laws flew back to Cleveland this morning, and uh, here we are. So, um. And so now OJ the Musical is available on iTunes. Everybody can get it. Is there any place else in specifically that uh, – I, I've always wondered that. Is there a better place for people to get it for the artist? Because when it comes to the music thing, um, it was slightly better with Amazon, but not that much. Uh, Spotify is kind of the best and the worst because it's available to everybody and they don't have to buy it, but you also don't get paid a lot of money. Yeah, it's interesting because we're available at this point on, I think it's like eight or nine different VOD platforms, and they don't really give you like the numbers on which is the best financial breakdown. So it's like whatever you use, if it's whether it's you know Amazon or Xbox or Vudu or PlayStation or Blingbox or and we're on all of them. Blingbox doesn't exist. I don't believe you. Bling box. Oh, it's it's huge in England. I think that's okay. probably how the person who made the paper dolls found us is on Bling box. And uh, yeah, so I don't I don't really know. I know like with DVDs, for example, like because we we've done most of this stuff as self distribution. So like our DVDs on Create Space, we get a large portion of it. But those are also available available through Amazon, and that we they take a very large percentage out of what we would get otherwise. And who wants DVDs anymore? I mean, come on. Some people want DVDs, I think. <laughs> yeah, I I only buy, again, back to the kid thing, I only buy DVDs when I need something to pump in the car when I'm on a long drive and I don't want to talk to my children. <laughs> right, I think you got a lot basically... of kids' movie DVDs. <laughs> yeah, OJ the Musical I don't think will qualify just yet. but Ch- uh... Children love OJ the Musical. You are wrong, Craig. So that's another thing I wanted to ask you about, by the way, is is hitting the hitting the festival circuit, and I just wondered what it was like to take a comedy um, through the festival circuit. It seems like, to me, most of the films that I notice that come out of festivals are heartfelt documentaries or really kind of heavy or quirky dramas. Yeah, we we usually joke that like before we even see the schedule for the festival, we always know we're going to be playing either Friday or Saturday night at nine o'clock. Uh-huh. They, we always go in the same slot. There's always like the really crazy movie, like the you know like movies like Teeth with like you know a man eating vagina and stuff like that. Those play at midnight on Friday and Saturday. Uh-huh. At nine o'clock are usually like. The comedies for people who have been drinking but don't want something that's completely insane. Yeah, we're and the so warm-up we, act. 
Yeah, we're the warm-up act for the crazy movies or for the people who are just kind of sick of too many, you know, documentaries about genocide, then they'll come see the OJ musical. But we and, don't, and we that don't means, get awards ever because that of That being it. said, I, I've, I've loved it only because, like, I mean, you hit the, the nail on the head. It's, I think that people can come to our film and, and sort of sit back, relax, and, you know, have a couple laughs. Um not think too hard. That's not to say the movie isn't uh, layered. No, it definitely doesn't take itself too seriously, though. But yeah, because you are. I, trust me. Uh, you know, Jeff and I, our first couple of festivals that we went to with this movie, we we would sit in the theater all day, you know, see like five or six movies all day, back to back to back to back. You take a couple breaks, you try and get some food, you know, you go to the bathroom and then, but you're just seeing movies all day. And a lot of people do that at these festivals. And like you said, it's, and these other films are really powerful and and moving as well. But sometimes you just want to take a breath and, and watch something that you don't have to uh, think too much about and, and have a laugh. So that's been a lot of fun, I think from that aspect. So maybe it's even been an advantage. Yeah. I think a lot of them, there's just sort of like, slots you fall into like you know when they're making their program you'll get grouped in as like oh we want to have three or four comedies this year so so for us a lot of it was look when we were you know targeting what festivals we thought might be interested in us it was looking at what we would consider comparable movies that played festival circuits previous years and look at what their what their schedules were and be like okay we should try for the same festivals all right, I'm going to change the topic again. So I've uh, I've started rec- when I record these podcasts. I'm also putting them up on YouTube. So I, I created a, a little graphic t- for for this podcast in particular. And I've got a little picture, the Waiting for Next Year podcast logo, my little headshot picture. I've got a headshot for Jeff, a headshot for Jordan. Um, it's actually the really cool shirtless one jordan you're welcome oh wow Ooh. thank you yeah um but then i i have a, a third headshot for oj the musical which is jeff tattoo version oh yes <laughs> so i we're gonna need to tell everybody how the tattoo version of you <laughs> came to be and uh which one of, of the lucky humans on this earth has that on them yeah it's uh it's my good buddy from college uh his name is andrew leboy and um you know, I, my wife and I, we live a little bit north of L.A., so when I'm working on films in L.A., I end up staying with friends from college, from Ohio University. And so I was staying at my friend Andrew's house on his couch, and he comes home one day, and I'm surrounded by papers, and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm writing my next movie. It's an O.J. Simpson musical. And he's like, there's no way in hell you're going to actually make that. <laughs> and at which point I say, if I do make it, you need to get a tattoo of me. And he's just like, okay. Like, there was no actual bet. It was just, a, if you make this movie, I'll get a tattoo of you. And, yeah, and so he, you know, he stuck to his word. And uh, before our screening at the Santa Barbara Film Festival, he got a tattoo of my face on his arm. Well, and, you and, know what? and of course, if you had failed to make the movie, the payoff for him would have been excellent. There would have been no payoff. That's right. the best part. <laughs> <laughs> there I'm was big... literally no gamble. I'm a big fan of LeBoy, but I, I don't quite understand because he's known you a long time, Jeff. If you've known Jeff a long time, you don't really put anything past Jeff. You know, it's just I, I don't get making that bet. I don't get it. Doesn't make but sense. if you've known LeBoy, you don't put anything past LeBoy. Like he was getting <laughs> you don't put the tattoo. stupid bets past LeBoy. Yeah, he was going to do it. Like I, I always most people don't understand what I'm saying. People listening to this might. Like, but a few people do, like out here who know him from like working on film sets. I'm just like, you know, he's from Youngstown, and they're like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Which to me is just kind of like he's like a lot of people I know from Youngstown. He's just kind of like, that's what I'm doing. I said I would do it, so I'm going to do it. I don't understand why anyone has a problem with this. That's that's really funny. And plus, that when people check out the picture itself, you know, I. No, no offense, Jeff. I, I think you're a fine-looking gentleman, but in tattoo form, I don't think any of us look better. No, it's a, it's a completely ridiculous thing. For a while, he was just going to get my name, <laughs> and our friend Amanda took that goofy picture of me, went on like some internet site where it was like, make a tattoo of your face, like some meme, po- posted that on my Facebook wall and said, you're welcome, 
And so I sent the picture to Andrew and he just goes, okay, let's do it. <laughs> I, was, I mean, the whole thing's so completely insane. But at our baby shower yesterday, I actually got my mom to put on his motorcycle helmet and take a picture next to him with the tattoo. Of, of, well, and of course, that tattoo is going to fit in perfectly with the motorcycle lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Well, and he also, he's a camera operator um, on, like, Bad Grandpa in the Jackass movies. Oh, that's awesome. So it's not like his employer is going to have issue with him having a completely ridiculous tattoo on his arm. All right. Well, let's talk about some sports before we uh, before we sign off here, because I, I know Jeff's a big sports fan. Jordan, remind me, uh, are are oh, yeah. you a big sports fan? And if so, which what who are your teams? Yeah, I am as well. I... I think Jeff brought this up on the first podcast that he did with you, Craig. But um, I grew up in Orville, Ohio, you know, about 45 minutes south of Cleveland, uh, pretty close to Akron. Uh, I'm an Indians fan. I'm a huge Cavs fan. And I grew up a Denver Broncos fan, which I know is um, sort of it's, blasphemy. Um, it's so terrible. But I, I, knew you got, I, I knew you guys were both <laughs> NBA guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where Jeff and I spend the most time on the phone talking about the Cavs, for sure. Even yeah, over I mean, the last four years with the miserable way the Cavs have played the last four years? Yeah, I mean, I think both of us has, have stuck pretty firm to the Cavs. We've both had league pass. We've uh, went to games together throughout these last four terrible years. And so, like, in the – I mean, in the movie, there's a shot where he's looking at his phone – where Eugene's character is looking at his phone and looks up and smiles – that's Jordan smiling because we just traded for Ramon Sessions, <laughs> or traded Ramon Sessions to the Lakers for the first round pick. Oh well, that's that. That's not as funny. I thought he was actually smiling because the Cavs oh, traded no. for Ramon Sessions. Yeah, that would have been more embarrassing. But yeah, we're, oh, yeah. Um, we 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 try to avoid like whenever he calls me or like because his family his family his his mom is like diehard like watches Bruce Drennan every night psychotic Cleveland sports fan. And so he became a Broncos fan. He'll probably try to somehow justify this, more or less to irritate his parents. So that bothers me. So we just talk about the Cavs because that's safer. But he, I think he empathizes with us as Browns fans, but, you know. Whatever. Oh, yeah. No, I, it was my rebellion. And look, I, I'm still an Indians and a Cavs fan. I get it. And I root for the Browns when they're not playing the Broncos. And look, I, I, I to this day – you know, I, I say my parents were obnoxious Browns fans with the dog biscuits and the and the parties and everything like that. And now I'm an obnoxious Broncos fan. And, and I always tell my mom and dad, I say, it could be worse. Like, I could have rebelled and been a Steelers fan, right? Like, that's how I look at it. But with the Cavs, with Jeff and I, you know, it's that sort of thing. Yeah, these last four years, they've been awful. And we've probably watched every single game. But I don't know, Craig, if you have a um, – like a friend like this, Jeff and I, it'll get to a point where if one of us can't watch one of the games, we DVR all the games or we watch them on League Pass Rewind or whatever. If we can't watch one of the games and it's a complete blowout and one of us watches the game, we'll let each other know. Like, th there's nothing you can get out of watching this Cavs game tonight. Like, it was just that bad, you know? Oh, yeah. I've got I've got one text buddy in particular that will let me know if I need to like catch up on something, if I need to watch the MLB.com condensed game or right. whether yeah. I could just like look at three highlights and forget that it ever happened. Yeah, that's yeah, what exactly. I've been dealing with with the uh, Browns game not airing, and it's finally airing right now. But I, I, find, I, was, I went radio silence, I think, for a day and a half, and I wanted to read all the articles about Kevin Love, but I'd been trying to avoid the Browns game. And then finally, last night, I was asked my buddy, I was like, should I just spoil the Browns game so I can, you know, read about the Cavs? And he was like, yes, it's terrible. Don't watch it. Which is funny because I, I was in uh, – because I live in the local market, I had to be tortured even from a distance because I live – or I was in Indianapolis over the weekend. And uh, um, because I live in market – my sling box could actually show me the game. So I'm, I'm at those, my wife's 20th reunion with my phone propped up on the table with the mm. game on just being a total awful, awful human being. But you know, what, what, what are you going to do? Well, that was uh, a jo Jordan at the opening night party of the Woodstock film festival. We were, uh, that was the Indians uh, wildcard play in game. 
And so we were both wearing Indians jerseys at this like nice function. <laughs> and Jordan, during a, we're watching a movie. We're at a screening of a film. Jordan had an earpiece headphone into his ear, which I refused to do. I thought it was disrespectful. And Jordan was like, well, I need to listen to the game. And that, so he yeah, you like, know. That is so up. awesome. Hoodie up, so nobody knows. Yeah, Jordan had a hoodie and a headphone with uh, with the game into his ear. See, these are the star moves that the director can't necessarily get away with, but... Yeah, well, he right. could do it. Je- Jeff can't be called... You know, if he was caught and called out, he that's not... He, he couldn't do something like that. So I have to be the, the wild card that pulls something like that off and gives Whispers Jeff updates, you know, during the film. So is there is there anything? I, it's it's almost not even worth talking about the 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 unbelievable off season the Cavaliers have had because there's nothing original to say about it. It's it's simply the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I agree. I mean, At this point, you know, it's uh, how it unfolded was completely unbelievable. You know, it's uh, it's funny. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, which you know makes. Jeff and I working together a little difficult since he lives in LA, but that day that it, well, that whole week leading up to it, you know, you, you sort of hear the rumblings that LeBron might come back and the whispers come out of Cleveland get stronger and stronger and louder and louder. And then it, it happens. It got to a point where I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm not listening to the Cleveland sports radio. I'm not refreshing my Twitter every 30 seconds. Like I'm done. I'm going to put my phone down. And then, uh, you know, and I, I took a good break and I picked it back up and it was right at the time that it came out and Jeff texted me and my mom texted me and I kept getting all these texts and that happened. And that day, you know, it's like in New York, I want to, I want to, I put my Vergeau jersey on, I walked out on the streets and it was pretty amazing. I had Knicks fans coming up to me, Lakers fans coming up to everybody was so excited and so happy that it happened. And that was you know, and that was just the beginning of all this madness. That was just the beginning of it. It's it's really hard to believe that um, that this is where we're at right now with this team. Jeff? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's completely insane for me. I mean, I was I had a stack of I took Tylenol PM every day the week LeBron came back because I couldn't fall asleep otherwise. Because I just <laughs> I, I, I the amount of hours I spent on the real Cavs fans message boards was very unhealthy. And I was just, I was losing my mind. I was taking time on all PM, but I also was trying to send out all the Kickstarter rewards for OJ the Musical. So I had about 150 manila envelopes of DVDs I was sending to people. I'm about to get in my car to go to the post office to send these. And my mother-in-law calls and says, put on Sports Center right now. He's coming home. Oh, and so I'm just like, I, I don't know what to do. I already planned this activity to get myself to stay off the internet and now it's all happening and so i mean the whole thing's been crazy i mean i think for me the the one that the, like the things i can't even wrap my brain around are the fact that like sean marion's coming to play for the Cavs for the veterans minimum and stuff like that i'm just like this like this doesn't even make sense like this narrative has taken such a drastic turn where well, on paper and now you, now go ahead. Now we're at the point. Well, now we're at the point. Like this is just sort of going with what you're saying. Now we're at the point where you know what Rizzo says that Z wants to come back and play for the Cavs, and you can't say that it's not going to happen, even though it's completely ridiculous. Yeah, we we sat through thirty or thirty five days of Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Love rumors, and then and then pretty much everybody reporting it was actually a done deal. And even that last minute attempt by the Suns to make a run didn't even scare me. I wasn't even phased. Yeah. I'd forgotten what it was like to not be paranoid that it wasn't going to work out. Because, yeah. I mean, the last time that I've had this feeling was the last time LeBron was here. You know, I, I didn't know that the Cavaliers were going to win it all. And, of course, they never did win it all the first time he was here. But I knew I knew for a fact that they were going to make the playoffs. And I knew for a fact that they were – almost definitely going to advance past the first round. And, you know, it's like that confidence, that that fan confidence is finally back. 
And it's it's so bizarre because the last time, you know, it was this it was this gradual build. And we watched, you know, LeBron become an adult before our eyes. Yes. And it all built up and to this moment where he just rips out our hearts. I mean, I was I was running um base camp on the TV show The League. Josh Cribbs was guest starring while I was watching the decision on a sling box in my trailer. And I left my trailer. I went and talked to Josh Cribbs and to Josh Cribbs. I compared LeBron to Hitler. And (laughs) then I proceeded to print out Dan Gilbert's comic sans letter and give it to the entire cast and crew of the TV show. And then taped a Josh Cribbs witness Photoshop to the front of Josh Cribbs's trailer. And nobody blamed you. Hey, no one blamed me. I loved the letter. Like in that moment, I needed it. And so to think that everything that my Cavs fandom all built up to that moment, and then these, and now it's just we're suddenly at the least one of three or four favorites to win the championship. Like in the last 30 days, that has completely, it's, I mean, it's just insane. And I'm sure if they don't win it this year, we'll get back to being kind of demanding, ungrateful we, kind of we fans. We will be but... demanding by the trade deadline. <laughs> if if Verizhou if goes down or anything happens, people are going to be going completely insane about the center position and losing their minds about how we need a rim protector and whatever else. But isn't it fun to be at that place again? To like yes. be at that place where we can be demanding again. You know, it's the I, that's we, certainly we will... better than the Dion punched Kyrie in the locker room calves of last year. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, Craig, you live uh, around or close to Cleveland, right? So I don't know how. I'm sure the mindset uh, at home is has got to be you know jubilation and and joy. It's the sort of thing living outside of Ohio and outside of Cleveland. You know, now I get a lot of people because I, I saved my LeBron jersey. It was in a box for four years. But it's funny because, like I said, that first day I wore my Verichau jersey and I was getting congratulations, high fives. P- random people were giving me high fives on the street. Now I'll wear my LeBron jersey out and it's a joke about, oh, you, good thing you didn't burn your jersey, right? And I'm like, no, I didn't burn my jersey. It was in a, yeah, it was in a box for four years, and I never wore it, and I never looked at it or thought about it, but I didn't burn it. So now it's it's interesting how the tides have turned, because now I feel like when I wear my Cavs stuff, it's almost a thing where people look at me and think, oh, this guy just likes the Cavs because LeBron's back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and and it, meanwhile, it's far too early for anybody to have gotten one of those new jerseys shipped. I think so. Um, yeah. Well, J- Jordan has a zero Believe Land jersey though, so he just shoots the front of it, and he looks like he's the first person with a Kevin Love jersey. And oh. Jordan got an Andrew Wiggins jersey. He was one of the few people to get in on that. I went to the draft in Brooklyn, <laughs> and I went with uh, my uh, lady Dana, who. I've been with for you know over six years, and she has jumped. She can't watch. She doesn't like football, but she enjoys basketball. So you know we've watched a lot of Cavs games together. So and my friend Luke, who's a Cavs fan too, we went to the the draft in Brooklyn, and you know Wiggins was our pick. That's the guy that we wanted. And so there's a video of us. We just got it, it, we means you. I wanted him beat, and then he was injured, and then I didn't care. <laughs> no, I mean I mean we those of us that were at. Me and Dana and Luke. You mean the yeah, real yeah. the I, real I fans sure. who attended the draft? I, yeah, I wanted to the make people sure who wasn't took the time. In that I didn't. Yeah, okay. the people who took the time out of their schedule to take a <laughs> ten minute subway ride to the draft. But you know, we were screaming for Wiggins. It was so much fun having that number one pick. Um, and you know, it's so I I had a couple of beers that night, and I went home, and you could pre-order Wiggins jersey for $49 on the Cavs team shop and you know maybe I did it but the yeah I had that when the year after LeBron left I wanted a Cavs jersey that's before we had Kyrie there was nobody to get and I was like I'm not gonna buy you know a Antoine Jameson jersey so I got a <laughs> pers- way, I personalized Antoine. yeah Jeff does I got a personalized uh, jersey I picked zero because there was you know I felt like it was there were zero players that I could follow i just wanted to follow the team that says believe in on the back so i'm driving around yesterday it's so stupid how i get so excited about this stuff i'm driving around yesterday wearing my zero believe land jersey in northern idaho because i'm on a vacation right now and listening to cleveland sports radio and they they say like oh yeah so kevin love's gonna wear zero and i'm like oh that's interesting 
And then it's that moment of self-realization where I look down and I'm like, oh, I'm, wear- I'm wearing <laughs> a Kevin Love jersey right now, pretty much. Uh, you were just too pussy to get Alonzo G. That's right. Oh, or man. CJ Miles, which also would be a Kevin Love jersey right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Another sad thing is that I did the same thing at the draft, but instead of Wiggins, I bought a Manziel jersey, which right now is sitting in my closet. I don't really know what to do with it. Yeah, uh, just just I, wait till week four. You'll be okay. Oh um, yeah, we'll see. I just I just hope I'm I hope I'm okay wearing that, and it doesn't go the way of my Jake Del Ohm jersey. I have a thing where I I impulsively buy jerseys and then sometimes regret it pretty quickly. <laughs> I think uh, I think my brother still has the Gary Baxter sitting in his closet somewhere. Oh man! Not only I... did Gary Baxter break both of his knees, he changed numbers at some point after doing so. I think the dumbest thing I have is I have a Browns T-shirt I got at a thrift store that was autographed by Joe Morris. Oh, that makes no sense. Oh, and no, actually, that's not my dumbest thing. My dumbest. Because wait, thing he is... was Giants, right? Yeah, but then he played for the Browns. Yeah. The sil- the silliest sports thing I have actually is my mom when I was uh for my bar mitzvah, my mom's friend's father was the dentist of the team. I didn't realize all this. So they asked me I didn't realize the team had a team dentist. Team has a dentist and they asked me who's your favorite player on the Browns? And I was kind of a smart ass, so I said Pio Sagapulatelli. <laughs> So I proceeded for my bar mitzvah. I got a congratulations on your bar mitzvah signed football from Pio Sagapulatelli. I got a. Uh, I, I'm 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 not going to one up that one, but I will say that I have a signed Cavaliers hat by Jawad Williams. Ooh, hey, hot wad! I watched him play. In, <laughs> I watched him play in high school a few times. I never heard anybody call him hot wad. Yeah, hot really, wad. hot wad Williams. That was his hot nickname. Williams. I thought. It probably was. I just that's hysterical. Uh, even. See, you got to wear that to the games this year. I pro- that's like you could go, you could walk into any arena during Cavs game this year wearing your hot wad jersey. <laughs> I feel confident won't... you could get him to go to the game with you. <laughs> like you could, you probably could yeah, you could walk into down. a jersey with hot wad. <laughs> People would know you're a real Cavs fan. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Well, I'm really happy we got the uh, the electronic issues worked out and we got this podcast in. I'm, of course, again, I'm talking to the uh, the gen- two of the gentlemen behind OJ the musical, Jeff Rosenberg, the director, the star, Jordan Jordan Camp, and uh, yeah. we've been talking sports and OJ the musical. And people can get that uh, all kinds of video on demand places, iTunes, DVDs from someplace dvds are on amazon uh it's on cable on demand it's on video on demand it's playing actually wednesday in cleveland at the market garden brewery and then uh we're playing in argentina we're playing in tacoma washington and uh we're still sort of all over the place is there a next project on the horizon for either one of you uh, yeah, we uh, we talk pretty regularly. We usually pepper our Cavs conversations with figuring out our next movie. And uh, yeah, there'll definitely be more movies. We definitely just, it's just sort of figuring out which one and when to pull the trigger on starting it. So nothing specifically planned yet? Uh, not yet, unless someone has a lot of money and wants to be an executive producer, um, then they can find me on uh, Twitter. Depends on the idea, so maybe you should pit. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's, it's getting close, though. I think it's getting close. Not, you know, I think uh, sometime within the next year we'll get it off the ground. And it's it's that sort of thing where obviously we're um, the thing we want to do uh, next will be completely different from OJ, and um, you probably won't understand that the same people that made OJ made the film we're going to make next. Um, but I'm, I'm sure sometime in the next Next year, we'll start uh, work on another project. Uh, I, I will say, Craig, you know, I think I think we should plan a, a trip back to Cleveland, Jeff, for one of these big Cavs games and, and hang out with Craig and go see a game. I'm in. I'm in. You guys can come to Tuesday, a, Tuesday Night need, Tacos with Cavs Twitter. Oh, yes. boy. That would be awesome. We, well, we'll, we need four tickets. It's the three of us and Hot Wad, and then we'll uh, go to town. <laughs> well, and you know what the four of us could do after the tacos and the Cavs game? We could all make a really stupid bet and get all of our faces tattooed on each other. If you I guys can't are up do for that. it, I'm not. I'm not up for that at all. I think we've got the plot to the next movie. 
Oh man, if Jawad Williams gets a tattoo of me, that's going to be a crowning achievement of my life. <laughs> no, I'm just about, I'm imagining this uh, this this Jeff tattoo on on Hot Wad. I think I think the most likely person to do it would be Delante, but I could see Delante like getting into it. Well, thanks again, guys. I, I just want to before we hang up, I'm going to say that I do I do endorse OJ the musical. I I thought it was really fun. I think the the music is astonishingly authentic, um, and it just it's a it's a really fun light watch. Um, you know, when you're looking for something that you don't have to think too much about it. You just want to have a good time. So go find OJ the musical, um, support some local Ohio boys, uh, in the, in the movie they made. And, uh, thank you so much for having us, Craig. Yeah. And let's yeah, do it again blast. sometime. Oh, sure. we will. We literally talk about the Cavs for over an hour every day. So anytime you want to be involved in the conversation, we'd love to have it. <laughs> Sounds good. And until next time, it's been the waiting for next year.com podcast. Next year. Next year. Next year. Next year.